special job this afternoon. I don't know if I can, I guarantee I can do it. My job is to make the message short, which is very difficult for me. God is good. All right. Um, today's message really has been something that has been in plan and in prayer for probably the last three, four months. And I have uh, my preaching schedule. So this is a message for today. If you can open your Bible, uh, at Luke chapter 8, verse 40 to 48, we will be looking at. Uh, verse 40 to 48. Not, we're going to add a few more verses, 40 to 48. Title is... Just a touch. Let's pray. Father, we come in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come to worship you and honor you. Father, we come today. Start our nature. Hear your voice. We will want to know you. We will want your nearness and presence. We ask that you, your word, come and dwell in our midst. Your word will come to us. The second creation, Lord God, you spoke, and there was light. As you have spoken, God, we ask your grace right now. We ask that you will help me to be clear, concise, and brief to the point. Every heart will receive it with joy. We love you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let me read. I'm reading from ESB, verse 40. You can look it up, follow me, or you can follow along your own Bible. Now, when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him for they were all waiting for him. And there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue. And falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. And Jesus went. The people pressed around him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. And immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, who was it that touched me? And when all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. For I perceived that power has gone out, of, out from me. And when this woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people, why he had, she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. He ends the reading of the word of God. All God's people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed be our God. All that, all that. That's good. Okay. Oh, uh, before I go into, you know, in my prayer this week, this Friday, especially in my prayer, the God really took me to this thought, and, and because I was praying through Ephesians 5, he said, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. How can I please you, O oh God, was my prayer. In, and literally, the uh, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6, popped into my head, you know, it's a verse we, we well know, jumped into my heart, which was today's message. He said, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he is rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. And really the thought really, and, and powerfully and, and by God's grace, we're singing one of my late favorite songs, Move Your Heart. It's all about that. How do I move your heart? How do I please you? That's what the song is about. And that's what you're looking at today. Today, when you look at today's word, you'll find Jesus, Jesus came back from the other side of the lake, the Sea of Galilee. 
You know what happened? She, she just, you know, told the disciple, let's go to the other side. On the way, they had a storm while you're sleeping on the boat. And Jesus and he rukes the wind and calms the ocean. And the disciples begin to ask, who then is this man who commands even the, commands even the waves and, and, and the winds obey? He, and he, he reaches the Gadarenes, that region, and meets a man with thousands of demons inside. His name called himself Legion. And you know how Jesus cast the demons out of him? And the, all the demons went into the pigs and, you know, and, 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 and fall into the sea. All of them died. And you know how that man was transformed. Now Jesus comes back because the people there didn't want him there anymore. They were more worried about, they were more scared of Jesus with the man being healed than, rather than rejoicing in the fact, the fact the man got healed and transformed. So he comes back. When he came back, a lot of people were gathered. Of course, all the stories, all the, you know, the uh, newspapers went around and they were, they were there. Now there was a man named Jairus, people call him, you know, pronounce his major penalty, and I think, uh, and some some Jairus, or whatever, and I, I think Korean sounds better, Yairo, or Jairus, okay, Jairus, this is a leader of synagogue, he comes asking, please, come, he falls on his knees, humbles himself, and come to my house, because my daughter, only daughter is dying. And now Jesus immediately goes to his house. Now, as he's going, a lot of people gather. You know, a, a lot of people are around him, pressing around him. And as he's going now, story begins with there was a woman. A woman. Before there was a man, there was a woman. Interestingly, she's been suffering for 12 years. The man had a daughter who was 12 years old was dying. Now here's a woman who's been suffering for 12 years. Really the word says she was uh, bleeding, has a bleeding issue for 12 years. Bleeding issue. I, did, I didn't know what that meant. I don't know whether she, she, you know, she is having womanly discharge constantly. Would not stop for 12 years straight. That's, and I do not know. I'm a man. I do not know what this means. I'm uncomfortable. I don't even mention those things. I do not know. Okay. But anyway, it's uncomfortable. Not only that, it's not only uncomfortable, but this was a disease she was dealing with 12 years. Think about it. You've been, had some issue for 12 years. Hopeless. Not only that, this is not only a physical illness. This is a, the, uh, this is a disease the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 15. If a woman has a discharge, she's unclean. And, and, and then if she has discharge, not a normal time, you know, just discharging of blood, that she should be separated and that she can, she's unclean until, she, until that stops. Now, for 12 years, she was unclean. If anybody who touches her becomes unclean. So she couldn't be with people. She was not only having physical problems, she was also isolated. Not only that, he says she spent all her money trying to get healed, and apparently doctors couldn't help, but spent all the money in looked. Luke's birth, gospel says, Mark's gospel says, she spent all the money and nobody can help. It, she's hopeless, desperate, isolated, lonely. This is who she was. Now she comes. In verse 44, it says, she came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. And immediately her discharge of blood ceased. It's interesting thing here, the, the people are gathering, right? The reason I read the verse about Jairus was to set a little context. She was not just coming to touch Jesus. There was a lot of people around him. A lot of people were following Jesus, literally. I, I'm not in my notes anymore. I'm all over the notes, okay. All right. Uh, in NIV, in NIV, literally said, the people was crushing him, was not just pressing. There's so many people to the point it was overwhelming Jesus. And, you know, and Jesus hurried with this guy, Jairus, to go to her house, his house, to get the, the daughter healed, and people are all over, and she is barely moving. And the woman comes from the back, hidden. She didn't want to be noticed. She comes from the back, 
and, and she comes and comes and grabs, touches a cloak. Literally, in, in, in Mark's gospel, it says in chapter 5, verse 27, 28, she heard about Jesus, hearing about Jesus. She came up, she heard about Jesus. And probably, you know, and she was hopeless, no hope, and a situation wouldn't get any better. And she heard about this rabbi from small town in Nazareth who was healing people. If there was even stories of it, there were stories, news about how he raised the only son of a widow who was being carried out in a coffin, how Jesus raised him from the dead. She, they, she probably heard about and you know, how that, uh, um, that demoniac was healed, set free. Probably also heard about, sounds very ridiculous, but how Jesus spoke and rebuked the wind. She heard about this man coming into his, his town, Capernaum. So she heard about him, and something grew up, grew in her. And she said, if I come, in that chapter, Mark chapter 5, it says, and came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak, for she thought, if I just touch his garment, I will get well. She said, if I just touch his cloak, I'll be healed. That's what she was thinking. And you have to understand, she's now coming. She didn't want to be seen. She's coming in the back, and she's pushing through the people. She doesn't want people to know her. Because, she, you know, if they found out she's unclean, they'll be shooing away, and she'll not be able to go. She comes pressing through with all the people. You know, and that's where she's coming. Think about that, you know, and that really the, there's a verse in the Bible that says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. And she, she heard about what Christ has done, a faith began to grow in her, the, about Christ, a faith in her grew. That made her to come, come to... Um, come and grab uh, and touch the cloak. It said immediately when she touched it, immediately two things happened. She was healed right, right away. Immediately her, she felt her body being healed. Totally healed. Secondly, immediately Jesus realized, knew that something went out of him. A power went out of him. Somehow when she touched Jesus' cloak, something happened. She was healed. The power from Jesus went out. Jesus knew and she knew, right? Something happened. Powerful things happened. And Jesus really turned around in verse uh, 30. Who touched my, my garment? Who touched my garment? So something went out of him. He says, who touched my garment? Let me stop here. Why is he asking? Does he not know? Who touched her? Who touched him? Why was he asking, who touched me? Who touched me? Maybe to rebuke her. You took something for me without asking. To rebuke her? Is he angry at her? Something. Why, why is he asking? Could he not just let her go? He's already busy. He's already busy going to the, uh, the house of Jairus to heal the daughter. Why is he stopping? They're already busy. Why is he asking? Who touched me? Now, 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 before I go on this, there's a, when you look at the, uh, the origin, no, I, I checked this Greek to see the words, and the word actually touched here is not regular touching, not just touching. Literally means grabbing, seizing something, and holding, holding, you know, grasp or holding something. He, he's a, he, say, he literally says, who touched me? And actually, I like the way I think um, NLT put it. Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me. Someone deliberately touched me. See, many, many people around probably rubbing their shoulders, touching Jesus. If I was there, you know what, I just want to touch him. Oh, I touched him. And it not, not wash my hands, right, for days. Oh, I got to touch him. Not that she really came and grabbed Jesus said, somebody grabbed me. There's a different kind of touch. There's a different, that's what it is. There's a different kind of touch that don't do nothing. You know, and if I came down and touched Pastor Mimi, you know, is this kind of touch? 
that, that, that different kind of touch. Some touch might mean nothing, you know. Some touch, touch some touch may mean something. <laughs> something here. Jesus saying, somebody deliberately touch me. There are people who are rubbing and their shoulders and touching Jesus everywhere. But she touched me. Jesus looked around to ask, why? Who touched me? He's asking not to rebuke her. I think two main reasons. To let her know, and I think to let her know that what she did really pleased him. I believe that's the main thing. And then she he could have just let her go, but then she would think it was my touch that healed me. She couldn't get the wrong ideas. Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? And then she comes and she comes and tells and everybody what she has done, why she touched him, and how when she touched him, she was immediately healed. And, and Jesus asked, and she asked, who touched me so that she could come forward, tell her story. As she, as she tells the story, her testimony, everybody will see that she was healed. No longer she did, does she need to be you know, hidden away or separated. She's healed. She's cleansed. She can be not back with all the people. That was one of part of her problems. Now she's here. Secondly, she just wanted to make sure that she had a right understanding. It's not just a touch. It's something else that really made the touch work. You know, and later on, you'll find in the Bible, after this account, many people try to come and touch Jesus. They hear the story. They think it's just about touching. It's not about touching. And Jesus really want to explain to her, it was not just a touching. Something else is going on here. Look at what Jesus says in verse um, 48. He said, daughter. After she told everybody what happened, Jesus said, daughter. Where was Jesus going? To heal a daughter of Jairus. Jesus calls this woman daughter. He had done this, this is really, Jesus knows exactly what he's saying. You are not just a woman. You are daughter of the living God. Daughter. And he says, your faith, not touch, your faith has made you well. Not the touch, the faith. And the word made you well. Made you well is it just has a whole lot deeper meaning. It is so so it is being healed. It also means made whole. It's a saying literally can mean some versions will say your, your faith has saved you. Faith has healed you. It was your faith, not just a touch, it was your faith that healed you. It was your faith that saved you, not the touching. She was because she had this idea. Maybe a five more minutes, okay. I think I, I spoke 20 minutes now. Okay, five more minutes. Okay, let me let me let me speak really fast. Okay, all right. Let me get get ready. Let me speak fast. Okay, this is very important. It was a faith that healed healed her. Not just a touch. It's not just a touch. Touch is more you know more than a touch. It is a powerful touch you are talking about here. In Hebrew 11, 6, which God really spoke to me this week, it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, your touch is a touch, doesn't do anything. Your touch means nothing without faith. He said, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. To please God, you need to have faith in God. You need to do things out of faith. Because anyone who comes to him, if you are coming to Jesus, you must believe two things. One, that he is, he exists. Secondly, he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You see, she came earnestly seeking to touch Jesus. That act of touching was act of faith. Her touching, her touching was act of faith. That's what was going on, act of faith. Today, seven of our youth are being confirmed and being baptized. Confessing with their mouth that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their own Savior and Lord. And some of them, or six of them, were baptized as infants according to the faith of their parents. Today they are saying, not, not because of my parents, but now for my own self, 
I believe in Christ for myself, confessing it, saying that what happened when the baby is real, that I, that's confirmed that, saying what happened was real to me now. That's what they're saying, those who have been confirmed. And those who are being baptized as an adult, you're saying, I as an adult, choosing to say, Jesus is my Lord. You see, the going into water don't change anything. You just get wet. If you use a soap, you maybe get a little clean, smell a little better. That's all. Water doesn't do anything. You see, you can take a bath any time in the day. You can take a shower any time of the day. That doesn't, that's not anything. It is when we do it out of faith that it becomes a baptism. Then it becomes confirmation. You see, it is, it is the act of faith that saves. It's the act of faith that heals. You know why we stand and sing praises for clapping hands? A lot of churches, they sit down and singing. We stand to say, God, we honor you. Maybe, maybe that's not why you're doing it. You just do it. Everybody else does it. Or originally, it began by saying, God, I honor you. When you stand up, that's an act of faith. That's an act of faith. You see, it was began as an act of faith. I grew up as a Catholic when I was a little boy. We get on our knees and pray on the little, you know, the bench as an act of faith. You see, it is not just any activity, but it is my act of faith, my touch of, touch of faith that saves me and heals me. This is what's happening today. This is why that being, your faith has made you well, saved you, go in peace. A couple more slides, and I skip all my slides here. Are you desperate for his touch? Are you desperate for God's touch in your life? The question for me is, what is your faith? What is, a, what is your touch of faith? What is your action of faith? Every morning I get up you know, and for something to pray in the morning. Not because I have to, it's, it's an act of faith. But when I come and pray before God, He hears my prayers. He answers my prayers. That's the God that I know. I come and sing to Him because, as an act of faith, because he loves to hear my voice. Yes, even my voice. He loves to hear my voice. What is your touch of faith that you will see God's power release, his love release? Let me, let me end with this thing. You see, the reason Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? Because he was pleased. He was really happy and pleased that she came and touched him. And that her touch of faith made him honored. He was honored that she believed in him enough to come through the old act to say that he can heal me. He can restore me. He is God who heals. God who restores. And she came. That honors him. You see, faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please him without faith. And you know, do not think faith you know, in a so historic ways, really not that. I think it is faith is simply my choice of actions, my choice of love unto him. God, I choose to say I love you. And that's an act of faith. I, and I, I come and bring my tithe and offering as an act of faith. Because I'm saying that God, it belongs to you. You gave it to me. That's an act of faith. Those are you know, and actions of faith, the touch of faith. And as our youth come, that's what, was, what will be happening today. They will be um, confirming their faith. They will be declaring their faith. They will be making their testimony of their faith. All right. God is good? Okay. That was 25 minutes. I'm happy. All right. We're going to our baptismal service right now. Okay.